Dear Madeline, hello. I hope you're well. I know it's been several years. I wanted to reach out sooner, but you're quite difficult to find, being on the move as you are. And the way you left things, I wasn't sure if you'd want to hear from me. Anyway, I've just published my new book, and I thought you might like a copy. I wanted you to have one, from me. It is our story after all. That day really did change my life. I want you to know that. You don't have to reply, if you don't want to. But if you do, and I hope that's the case, I trust you'll find me. All my love, Julia. I write to you as a 24-year-old woman, young and successful, having achieved a lot in my short life. I've already published two books. The last topped the charts of the Times bestseller list for nine weeks. I have a big house, a sizable amount of money, people working for me, and holiday houses all over Europe. But this isn't intended to sound boastful or arrogant. Quite the opposite. In fact, this book seems to be the only meaningful part of my life thus far. Here I share with you one day that changed my life forever. It all started one evening in spring, in my 22nd year, when I received an unexpected phone call. It had been like any other day. I woke up, had breakfast, a cup of black coffee and a piece of toast, same as every other morning, brushed my teeth, did some paperwork, hopped on the tube to my regular coffee house for lunch, and then returned home to write. And then the phone rang. and the perfect order of my daily routine was thrown into chaos. I recognised her voice immediately. We hadn't spoken for six years. I sat in disbelief as questions flooded through my mind. How did she find me? Could it really be? Why in God's name now after so long? I suppose you'll need some context to understand me, her, and the nature of our relationship. You see, the voice on the other end of the phone was that of my sister Madeline. When we were children, we lived alone with my mother. Our father left us when we were very young. We were very close. Our mother's decline after our father left meant we only really had each other. As we grew, we evolved into two very different people. I planned ahead, always knew my next move. Everything was calculated, ordered, structured. I always had my future planned out. Madeline was... Well, she always seemed to be somewhere else. She was always moving, changing. She lived without structure. She never seemed to want to grow up. We were so different. I suppose we balanced each other out in that way. When I was 16 years old, she ran away. She gave no warning. One day we were laughing, talking, playing. The next she was gone. She left nothing behind except a crumpled note on the bed saying, Sorry, I needed a new adventure. Love you. We hadn't spoken since, except for a postcard two months after her departure. Perhaps now you can understand my surprise at hearing from her again. And so, with one fateful call that evening in spring, our adventure began. Madeline? Hi, I need to stay with you. I, um, how did you find me? It wasn't very difficult, actually. Can I come over? Has something happened? No. Then why? What? Do I need a reason? Well, yes. I miss you. And I don't have anywhere to go tonight, so I'm sort of banking on you saying yes. I... Okay. Okay. Do you need me to book you a car or something? No, that's okay. 
It's a funny story, actually. I'm sort of already here. Hi. It was completely surreal. I was happy, I was angry, I was confused. It was completely and utterly bizarre. Looking back now, I wish I'd left everything else and just focused on the happiness while it lasted. But that's always the way with hindsight, I suppose. Anyway, in the moment, all I could really feel was confused and angry. It's awfully drab in here, isn't it? I don't think so. Well, I do. Well, I guess that doesn't really matter, does it? Hmm. You need more flowers. And more light. Where's your room? I want to unpack my things. You won't be staying in my room. The guest room is down the hall and to the left. Come on, it'll be fun. Like old times. Sleeping head to toe, telling ghost stories. Don't push this, please. The bathroom is down the hall, guest supplies are in the cupboard. Good night. In retrospect, the way I dealt with the situation lacked courtesy and common sense. But I was overwhelmed, to say the least. For the first time in six years, the impeccable structure of my life had been disrupted. I never faced a situation like that before. So I decided to sleep and face it in the morning with a clear head. I was wrong about the clear head thing. It was a difficult morning. That's a terrible habit. It's bad for your teeth. You're bad for your teeth. Stop being such a child. Stop being such an adult. Oh, why are you here? Huh? Have you come to tell me how I'm living my life wrong? What's up with you? What's up with me? What's up with me? You ran away with no explanation. I spent six years dealing with guilt, confusion, abandonment issues, and now you come waltzing back into my life as if nothing ever happened? How else am I supposed to bloody react that? I left a note. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come. I shouldn't have come without warning. No. It's okay. I just... I just wanted to fix things. I didn't mean to hurt you when I left. I want you to know that. Was it... Did I... It's okay. I know. Where are we going? We're going for lunch at my local coffee shop. Sounds nice. You've been there before? Yes, I go every day. Every day? Yes. No. What? Mum, I'm not going to let you live the same boring life day in and day out. No, absolutely not. Where's your sense of adventure? For goodness sake, I Just don't... Just trust me on this, okay? One day. It's the worst that could happen. Okay. Okay. Trees swaying in the summer breeze Showing off their silver leaves as we walked by soft kisses on a summer's day laughing all our cares away just you and i sweet sleepy warmth of summer nights gazing at the distant lights in the starry sky what a lovely day. Yes. And the sun's out too. See? What? See everything. You're being ridiculous. Am I? There's so much you seem to be missing. You live every day the same. You miss everything new, everything spontaneous. I don't do yeah, spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. You don't do spontaneous, I know. But maybe you should. Perhaps. You know, I'm not saying jump out a plane or backpack through Europe or save the world. I'm saying, go to lunch somewhere new, talk to new people, I don't know, just live a little. <laughs> what? Is this what it's like to be inside your head? I suppose it is, <laughs> yeah. Mm. What? I've missed you is all. I'm still afraid of the dark. Come here. 
I missed you. I missed you too. Madeline. Yeah? Why did you leave? I couldn't stay anymore. Why? Was it me? No, no. I just... I had to be moving. I felt trapped. I'm not like you. I, I don't have it all planned out. I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going. And, and that's okay. That's fine. I just... I have to be moving to feel like I'm getting anywhere. I guess I'm scared I won't achieve all my ambitions, even though I don't know what they are yet. I go on all these adventures to work it out, I suppose. Do you understand? Yes, I think I do. I'll always come back. Well, you're here now. Yeah, I am. Do you want scones for breakfast? Yes, please. Okay. Good night. Good night. Once again, Madeline had left, but this time I understood, her sense of adventure needing to be on the move. She instilled some of that adventure in me, I think, or at least I hope so. It's what I admire most about her. My whole outlook has changed because of her. I guess it doesn't hurt to be a little spontaneous. It truly was a remarkable day. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget her. I hope one day she'll find me again. But until then, that was my day with Madeline.